Hello everyone, today we're going to be working on a new project. Uh, we've got a new stovetop installed here for us. It's one of the flat stovetops. Inside of this there's an element in the burner that looks like it's burnt out. So we're going to troubleshoot this today. Uh, we have a dual burner. So the inside element is a small circle, the outer element is larger. And we're going to be looking at why the larger element does not work. Here's what it looks like when you, when you turn it on. The, I can already feel the inner circle is getting hot, the heat's coming up, it's turning red. The outer circle uh, is still cold to the touch and it's not going to get red at all. So let's watch what, this, what, what happens here and then we'll figure out how to fix it. Alright, right now it's really hot in the middle. The outside edge is still cold, uh, still cold to the touch. It's just not warming up. So there's something messed up with the burner. We gotta take it apart and figure out what's wrong. Lifting the stove top up to get access underneath it. The power is already off at the circuit breaker. Make sure you have the power off because otherwise you'll be touching live wires. taking off the glass cooktop surface to give me access to the to give me access to the uh, burner elements and switches underneath for diagnostic purposes. So now we have the glass cooktop off of the main cooktop assembly. We've exposed all the burner elements here, the control switches. So now we're going to get into testing the circuitry here to see if there's continuity in these burners using a voltmeter. We're going to measure the resistance of these different coils uh, to see is it the burner element, is it the control switches, or is it the wiring that's messed up. Right now I'm testing the continuity, the resistance of this burner element by touching the contacts. So there's a there's a, a center center black wire that I'm touching along with one of the outside wires. I'm getting a resistance of 49 ohms. My voltmeter is set on the on the ohms setting for resistance. So that means that there's a, a continuous circuit here, there's some resistance, which the Burner is just a big old resistor, makes a lot of heat. All right, now I'm switching to test the other side. I'm getting about 38 ohms here, so that's a good range for resistance for a burner. Somewhere between 20 and 100 ohms is what you're looking for. That just means that the burner element itself is not burnt out, that there's a continuous circuit, and that the we've ruled out that the burner 
is the issue here. So it's probably probably a switch that's burnt out. So we'll be looking at that. Uh, there's also wiring that could be a problem, but this one's relatively new, so it's probably not the wiring. But we will we'll take a look at the switch next. Now we're going to take apart the switch cover assembly, pull off the cover so we can get access to the switches. There's two screws on this one, one that's into the bottom, mounted into the bottom of the cooktop. The one on the side. We have the, the switch box assembly loose, now we're going to remove the screws for the most likely what is the faulty switch. So we can pull this out and test it. Now the switch is loose, we just need to push it out through the back. These wires are pretty tight so it's kind of a juggling act to get it out without pulling up off more wires. We're taking out a couple more screws to get out one more piece of metal shrouding just to get a little more access to this. Now we're going to see the back side of all the switches and the relays and hopefully work our way in here and get this switch out so we can take a look at it. I'm taking a picture of the wiring right now so that I can see how to reassemble all of this. This is the switch that we pulled out and I've taken all the connectors off. We're going to do some diagnostics on the terminals and see if the problem is with the switch. So once we pulled this switch out, I pulled this, this face plate off of it and when I pulled it out I heard jingling, metal against metal. And as it turns out, there's a piece of the switch that's broken off. So this piece of the switch right here. Hold on. Close up view of the piece. This is the inside of the switch, and this is the little piece of metal that broke off right here. This broken piece of metal is what controlled when it when it closed inside of the switch when it closed up against the other contact for the for the large burner. That's what made the contact. It made the switch close and turn on the hot burner. That part is broken. So no, there's no way to reattach it. You may be able to re, to take apart this switch and fix it, but I'm going to be buying a new switch. And they're pretty expensive, but I'll try to put a link below to this switch if you need to replace this kind of switch. So after troubleshooting the switch, I figured out the switch is broken. There's actually a loose part in it, so it definitely was not going to work. 
I uh, started, I went online, figured out that there's a new part number for the switch. Um, so I actually bought a new, newer version of the switch. Uh, it has the same functionality, but a little bit different configuration on the pins for the uh, different wire connectors. Uh, I got it out. It's, uh, the model number on this is 8203534, and that's going to vary based on your own equipment. But I ordered this part, and then it comes with the instructions that has information on has information on how to hook up the different colored wires to these different connectors on here. And uh, mine maps out really easily. It matches all the colors, and it tells what pins to put it on. It matches the old one, and, and then the new one has different uh, different labels on here, like H1B, L2, L1. Uh, H2, H1A, so it's easy to see uh, where do you put different colored wires onto the back of this switch. I'm going to go ahead and uh, assemble the switch into the mounting brackets here. Uh, there's a there's a rubber cover gasket that goes over it to keep in case any liquids gets in there. I just took that off the old one and put it on the new one. Reinserting it into the backing of the bracket right now, making sure those screw holes line up. Uh, I had to do a little bit of troubleshooting to figure out which way does the switch go. And so you can put your put your knob on there and figure out uh, if it has a good solid click, that's the direction that is going to be off. And that's what I did to figure out uh, which way should I mount this because you can put the connectors on however you just have to make sure the you have to make sure that the knob is going to point up so that you don't have a mismatched knob facing the wrong direction the instructions tell you how to change the screw holes in case yours needs to be rotated 90 degrees you can pop out the little uh, metal brackets inside of the switch to mount these screws on there and then it'll be a little bit easier so I'm just tightening it up now using a Phillips head screwdriver. Making sure the switch is flush with this mounting bracket. Alright, it's on there good. So right now it's mounted. Next we have to wire up the different colored wires. Now I'm looking at the map on here, so it tells me, uh, for example, black wire needs to go to the L1 terminal and it's labeled on the back of the switch. This may vary based on your own switch and configuration and color of your own cables, uh, but I would follow this. There's also some, some good guides on the internet uh, if you look around, but I'm just going to wire this up. This happens to match very well with the colors of cables and the switch labels on the back of the switch, so it's going to be a pretty straightforward task for me. They include some jumpers in the with the new switch in case the cables aren't long enough. Hopefully mine will reach. It looks like it's going to reach just fine. Alright, so we've completed the installation of the switch, connected all the connectors to the right terminals on there using our map provided with the uh, switch and the instructions. Uh, now I'm going to remount the, all the switch bracket here, put the switch bracket back into place in the cooktop. There's uh, three or four screws here, you have to reassemble. Uh, this one fits in place pretty easily, so it's ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and put in the first screw here. There's a heat shroud. Heat shroud goes on next. There's uh, two screws here on the mounting bracket for this. Make sure it's firmly situated. And at this point, we're ready to put back on the glass cooktop, and then we'll reattach the knobs on top and drop the cooktop back into place.
the glass cooktop is on here now. We're going to put the knobs back on. Next step is to attach all the screws on the side here. Now we're going to turn on to test to make sure that it works. Turning on the dual burner onto high. So we're going to let it heat up here. You can already see it's starting to glow red right now. And you can feel the heat coming off of it. And so it look, certainly looks like it's fixed, it's working. Uh, before only the inner ring was working, now both the rings are working. So this should be a fully operational cooktop for us now. Thanks for joining us today. I uh, hope that your repair goes as well as mine did, and uh, good luck. Be safe.